Here we have a fairly simple problem where hot gases are entering into a turbine. We're told that we can treat these hot gases as an ideal gas, which is going to be air. We have the pressure and temperature on either side of the turbine, and then we're given the heat transfer out of the turbine in BTU per second. We have the mass flow rate going in, of the air going into the turbine, and we're going to be looking for the power, and it's going to be in horsepower. So let's first apply our first law of thermodynamics. The reason I say that is because if we have a temperature of air on either side, we know we can pull out these specific enthalpies, and we have the heat transfer, and we're looking for the power, so it just seems the most appropriate to use. So we're going to have that zero equals the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate, m dot, times basically everything on the inlet minus everything on the exit, which is just going to be the enthalpy, so H1 minus H2. And we don't have any um, indication of what the velocity is or the elevation differences on either side, so we're just going to assume that we don't have kinetic or potential energy in this case. So now if we use some simple algebraic rearrangement, we'll have that the power is equal to the heat transfer plus the mass flow rate times the difference in specific enthalpy. Just to keep things simple, let's solve for the power in BTU per second first. So we're going to have that the power equals, and we'll keep the heat transfer in BTU per second. So we'll have negative 14 BTU per second. And the reason it's negative is because it's leaving the system. If it was entering the system, it would be a positive number. Now we're going to add the mass flow rate, which is 0.22 and that's pound mass per second and now we're going to multiply that by the specific enthalpy so to find h1 we have 2700 degrees rankin so if we go over to table a22e and we go to 2700 degrees rankin we have 703.35 and the unit for enthalpy is actually btu per pound so let's fill that in. So we have 703.35, and that's BTU per pound mass, but we're going to add that at the end. First, we have to subtract the H2 enthalpy, which is going to be at 1620 degrees Rankin. So if we go to table A22E, and we see there's no six, uh, 1620, but we have 1600 and 1650. So if we use some linear interpolation, we know that our enthalpy should be between these two numbers here, 395 and 409. And if you interpolate, you should have that H2 equals 401.1, and that's once again BTU per pound mass. So now let's make sure our units are consistent. If you multiply the mass flow rates, pound mass, by the pound mass of the specific enthalpy, you'll have BTU per second, which is what we're adding, so we should be good. All right, and if you multiply across, you're going to have that the power equals 52 0.5 and the unit would be BTU per second but we're not done here because we're looking for the unit in horsepower and while we don't have a direct conversion factor for BTU per second to horsepower or vice versa the book does tell us that one horsepower equals 2545 BTU per hour which seems more reasonable that we can get BTU per second into BTU per hour so now if we have 52.5 BTU per second and we just get rid of the seconds and turn them into hours we have 3600 3600 seconds per one hour you know that the second and second will cancel out and you'll be left with BTU per hour and now we just have to convert into horsepower so we have one horsepower is in one entire or 2545 I should say 2545 entire BTU per hour. That's just the conversion factor. And now we can cross out our BTU here, BTU, hour, and hour, and you are left with horsepower. So now if you just multiply across numerically, you should have that the power equals, W dot equals 74.26, and it is in fact in horsepower.